Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you what I call the North Fork Prince Nymph, which is essentially a Prince Nymph uh, on a curved hook, but there's a little feature there that makes it something like the North Fork Special, and I'll explain in a little bit. So we're going to tie this fly on the TMC 2457 in size 14. I'm showing you this goose feather because my son-in-law shot a goose and I got some really great bias from the leading edge of those primary feathers. So notice how clean these are and we want bias that don't have a um, feathery tip. So here we have a piece of small copper wire, some rabbit fur dubbing. I'm going to use fox squirrel. We want a little bit of spikiness to the thorax. And for this fly, we'll use a 764 black bead. I believe that those are made out of brass. So here, if you haven't seen Tim Flagler do this, um, he picks up the beads with the bodkin. And that way you get to flip it in the right orientation. So the small hole is facing up and uses the plunger hackle pliers and it's kind of easy to handle the beads and the hook and get everything lined up and put together. And it gives you a handle to hold on to the hook while you get it in the vise. So here I have the hook turned down a little bit because we're going to work on the um, tail first. And the tail on this fly is going to be two of those goose bites. So we'll get the thread started in the middle and trim off the excess and that little piece landed right on the hook and kind of stuck there and seeing it now it bothers me didn't notice it while I was getting ready for the next step and here we go so we're going to try and capture that wire let thread torque take it to the opposite side which is kind of important that way when you bring that first wrap around of the wire for ribbing it won't jostle the tails and we'll get it pinched out of the way in the uh, material clip. So the tail's going to be two of those bites, and I like to lay those against a small section of um, dubbing. So we're going to use some of that uh, gray rabbit for dubbing and make a little pad at the back end. It's basically the back end of the body of the fly. Uh, we're going to make a pad and land the thread or thread back right in the middle of that pad. So when I use the dubbing, tie the bites in over dubbing, then I like to do them one at a time. In this case, we want to put one on each side. We want to keep it relatively short, so maybe a hook gap in length. And when you put it, put them in one at a time, you get to adjust them. So one done kind of turn things a little bit and work on the back side. And like I mentioned, we want a nice clean edge. Some of the bites have a long fuzzy edge and it, they don't make good tails. They don't make good anything actually. So there I jumped ahead and I pinched that bites down against the bare hook. And well, the hook with just thread, not with the uh, dubbing. And we'll snip off the excess. So with that second bite snipped out of the way, it's not a bad time to straighten the hook up in the vise so that we can finish the body and work our way forward. So with these curved hooks, I like the bead, the eye of the fly to be level or just above. This has a bead on it, so we don't have, to, don't have to worry about the thread slipping off the front end when we finish. And we'll go back to dubbing with that uh, gray rabbit fur dubbing. Here I'm trying to zoom out a little bit so you can see the, uh, the noodle, the length of the noodle, dubbing noodle. And that's enough to start with. It's probably not enough to finish. And we wrap back. 
Yeah, it's kind of important to wrap back over the uh, where the biots were tied in. Make sure that's all covered. That can help shape the biots or point them in the right direction as well if you need to. And it's going to take a little more dubbing to level things out and work our way forward. And it kind of ran out a little bit there. And like one more pinch of dubbing just to make a better front shoulder on that on that body, on that abdomen. And there we have it. And we'll put a whip finish on the uh, around the bare hook there and use the rotary feature to put in the rib. So bob and cradle in, get a hold of the wire. This is where it's important that we put the wire on the far side. So we have time to space that first wrap and miss those biots and goes underneath first. And I don't know, four or five turns here. Someone's probably counting, but um, just want to make that look like segmentation. And I like to finish the wire up on that on the bare hook without the dubbing in the way. That's kind of why I left that little gap. I get an extra wrap or two of wire. You could even fill in a little bit and add some weight. But it ties in tighter when you uh, when you leave that little spot. So helicopter off the excess. And go back to dubbing, still using the gray rabbit. And we're going to fill in that low spot. Cover up the end of the wire. So I'll start right against the bead. Fill it up to where I have a nice diameter and work my way back. And then I want to park the thread back up at the front. And the next thing I'm going to do is tie in two more bias. So for this fly, I'm going to cross them, lay them kind of flat but curved down across the top. This is kind of like a Prince Nymph. And I'm going to get a couple of wraps there to hold them in place, make sure that I have the right angles. And, and this is where things go a little different. So I'm going to take some wraps back as if that was the back end of the thorax. That kind of curves those uh, biots back and down. Now, in the North Fork Special, the biots are turned the other way. I'm pretty sure that's how Tim designed it. Um, Tim Wade from North Fork Anglers. I was out there a couple of years ago, and he talked me through all the uh, features of this fly and how it traps a little air bubble and with the extra little biot pieces and um, all cool stuff. Um, just pretty involved when you go to make his fly even though they do it really quick because it's only a couple of materials. So here's the little thing I do different. So I'm going to fold those biots back, the, the stump ends of the biots, and wrap down over them three or four wraps. And then I'm going to change dubbing here. This is where we're going to switch to the... Uh, fox squirrel or something spiky. I think you could use their hair's ear if you had access to the uh, an actual hair's mask. You could cut the shorter, you know, guard hairs and mix it with some fuzz and get the same effect. But I think the idea here for me is to kind of build that up but have it look spiky. Again, a little bigger in the back and kind of work my way down. And then I'm right behind the bead, and that's where we're going to finish things. And when I finish behind the bead, I like to add the head cement to the thread. Something I saw in a video. Not sure who did it first, but great idea.
and I don't know five or six turns in this case one good whip finish and that should not come undone and we'll snip things off there and here I got those big butt ends of the bias sticking back and this is where it's kind of like the North Fork special in that he uses little pieces of bias. I'm using the butt ends and I'm going to trim them kind of on an angle and I want them to look like a piece of wing case um, sticking back. Now that one moved on me as I trimmed it, so I'm going to take another whack at it and, and get a better angle. But there, not exactly a North Fork Special, not exactly a Prince Nymph, but a really easy, uh, almost a guide fly. Something you could tie a bunch of in a hurry. But all I know is uh, in this gray color and on one of the local waters near me, uh, it catches fish. So thanks for uh, watching. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon.com. Until next time, be safe.